Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Xfinity Sports Extra. On this President's Day Eve, we start with things you didn't see in the NBA All-Star Game. One was a nugget, two was some defense, and three was defense. Who cares? Do people want to see defense in an All-Star Game or dunks? Defense or dunks? Anybody? Dunks. Dunks. I got a dunk. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. Buckle up. To New Orleans we go. Kyrie Irving to LeBron James. There's a dunk. And then besties, BFFs, Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant actually teamed up for an alley-oop dunk. So sweet. The West bench. Oh, they're back together. Yay. Second half, Steph Curry off the backboard to Anthony Davis of the hometown Pelicans with medal and brawn. Then James Harden, another one for David. Fly, Pelican, fly. Nola in the house, Davis, happy Mardi Gras. The MVP with 52 points, the West, 192 to 182, winners. All right, please welcome, as always, the terrific twosome, the devastating duo. We have Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, Troy Rink and Woody Page. And can you believe all those dunks in the All-Star game? I mean, there was no defense, guys. People on Twitter were going crazy. Where's the defense? Woody's upset he took the under. <laughs> the under, yeah, well, 192, 182. There was yeah. more defense in the Pro Bowl, Woody, than there was in the <laughs> NBA All-Star Game. Yes. That was a record by Anthony Davis, first point in an All-Star Game, which is significant. It was, they broke the record of 1962. That's a big deal, but wow, it was just an and one game. What are you guys expecting to see? You want it know. to be 88 to 85? I know. It's yes. an All-Star <laughs> Game. Uh, people want to see offense. They want to see showboating. They're, they're not into to watch defense and the players if you want defense then bring in guys who play defense in the in the NBA or offer the winning team a Maserati for every guy that's on the winning team now Whoa. you'll see some defense there, there we go all right well let's look ahead to the second half of the season for the Nuggets right now the Nuggets are in the playoffs a game and a half ahead of the Blazers for the eighth spot in the West and Nikola Jokic the sensational Serb not an all-star this year but Took part in the NBA All-Star Skills Challenge. The Joker's become one of the best players in the league in the last couple of months. They're triple doubles. They're 40-point games. He's become the face of the Nuggets. So, guys, let's talk about Jokic. Should the Nuggets bank on him as the future superstar of the team and market him as the face of the franchise? Absolutely. Because two things, Lionel. He has production of a superstar, and he has the personality. He's a funny guy. He gets it. He plays off the, the international flavor of it. But look at this, Woody. In his last 27 games, he's averaged 20 points, 10 rebounds, almost six assists. There's very few guys in the league that can put up a stat line like that. If you put him on the open market, Lionel, he's a $200 million player. He's absolutely the face of the franchise. And the analytic experts from another company I work for, ESPN, said that he's having the third greatest season of any young player in the history of the NBA. Wow. When you average out yeah. an, over an entire season, I remember when they drafted him because they drafted with with two other foreign players. And I looked and I went, he's playing like a man in a boys league. That He can't be that good when he comes over there. He's playing the same way as he did when he was over in Europe. That, that yeah. he, is, he is a special player. And you've got a Batman Robin situation there when Murray had the kind of game he did in the Futures game. Exactly. Jamal Murray in action over the weekend in that Rising Stars Challenge. Emmanuel Moutier was supposed to play as well, but uh, an injured back sat him down. We've all been there. A bad back, can't play. Murray went off. He was best in show. 19 years old, scored 36 points, 10 three-pointers, also dished out 11 assists for the double-double and the Most Valuable Player Award. So now he's coming back to Denver, averaging 20 minutes a game and nine points a game for the Nuggets. So, Troy, Jamal Murray, did he prove this weekend he deserves more playing time when he comes back? Uh, he absolutely deserves a little more playing time. He's matured as the season's gone along. You just mentioned he's a young player. You're talking about a guy that had one year in college. He played big-time basketball at Kentucky, but still one year in college. But he's matured to the point, Lionel, he deserves more time. I'm starting to wonder where Moutier fits in the future of this yeah. franchise. More time. If he doesn't shoot better, he can't play on this team sure. for me. But you're saying more time. I say put him in the starting lineup. Forgive me. Gary Harris, uh, Jameer Nelson, nice players. Okay, you get into the playoffs. You're the eighth seed. You're going to be out in four games. I want to see what these two young players can do. I want them in the lineup on a 30-minute 
per bases every night, and Moutier's going to either have to learn how to shoot and learn how to grow up, or he doesn't belong in the lineup or on this team. Right. And I just think you've got to go with these guys. you got too many people like uh, Chandler and Gallinari who are hurt all the time. Get rid of them before the Thursday deadline. Fareed, yeah. let's go with the young players. See what happens. All right, let's talk Broncos now, guys. And uh, the Tony Romo rumors and speculation not going away. In fact, uh, getting stronger. This week reports out of Dallas, the Cowboys uh, might release Romo out into the wild, and the Broncos are still one of three teams he'd like to play for. So, Tony Romo, bring him in. Let's see what he's got. I mean, 37 years old, injured, but hasn't played in a while. So, I don't know. I'm all for it at this point. He's got five games in his last 32. That's how much he's played, Lionel. He hasn't played basically. He last, last year he played one meaningless game at the end of the season, Woody. Here's the issue for me. I like the idea in concept, but if they don't improve their offensive line, it's counterintuitive to bring in a 37-year-old who couldn't stay healthy behind the best line in football. His back became an accordion in the preseason. So unless they can tell me they're going to address the line, I don't want to see Romo here. The other issue with Romo is you want the best spot for him? Houston. That's where he belongs. Well, Houston. Who are you covering? Houston or Denver? You <laughs> sound like you sound every time I talk to you, you sound like a broken Melly Manelli Vanelli record. Uh, over and over again, same thing. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, let, yep. let me tell you some research. <laughs> and you should do some research that I've done. There have been 102 starting quarterbacks in the Super Bowl, guys. And guess what? Out of those 102, 10 of them have been in their first two or three years, and only five of those guys won. You don't win Super Bowls with guys that are in their second year. We're talking about both Lynch and Simeon are in their second year. I don't care. You don't, you don't think we're almost played enough in the last two years. Well, guess what? Neither one of these guys have played enough in the last two years. I want a veteran quarterback in here, and while this window's open for this defense, I don't want to go with two young guys that are not going to lead you to the Super Bowl. Ben Roethlisberger I'm with Woodrow <laughs> on this one, buddy. I'm not with you bring guys on Tony this one. Bring in Tony Romo and see what happens. You better bring in a doctor so we can explain the medical reports. Well, well you got to get it up. But you keep saying that. Uh, it would, you want those two guys to play behind this offensive line? That's got to be your first priority is to get a couple of offensive linemen. One in the draft, one off the uh, free agent list, and build up that offensive line, and then you could put Tony Romo or me behind that offensive line. I don't know what draft you're looking at. I don't see an offensive line that can start in this draft. Oh, really? All right. It's you close. All right. We spent a lot of time there on Romo, and we're running out of time. Let's talk trenches real quick. Down and dirty. Games are won and lost. What do you wrote a commentator about a very interesting guy, Utah left tackle Garrett Bowles? Yeah, and you're saying there's nobody in the draft. He is the guy. He is going to end up being the number one offensive tackle taken. He only played two years at Snow Junior College. He played one year at Utah, so he is he is uh, somewhat raw, but he dominated in the Pac-12. He was the best offensive lineman. He was the number one offensive lineman in in the Pac-12, number two uh, all-team uh, All-American, and a kid was on his uh, LDS mission down in Colorado Springs. He'd love, he told me, to play for the Broncos and meet Mr. Elway. Where did you get those highlights? Huddle? <laughs> you like his dad putting away a right. resume tape. I couldn't find one tape I liked of him. Ryan Ramzik is better. I don't want an offensive lineman in the first round. He's a project. Raw, he's a project. That's another word for project. I'm out.